Let me once again uh, thank EQ and uh, all of you for joining us this uh, afternoon. And uh, what uh, I think the large agenda on uh, the green energy today, obviously, which we have uh, started with is a clear uh, challenge is that, you know, the tariffs are actually causing a lot of uh, pressure back on the uh, developers. And uh, it's causing actually a great rundown, I would say, on the returns on equity. So you need actually clearly innovative solutions to do this uh, enhancement of return on equity. And unless you get that, you will not be able to attract the right investors which you need for your project. So that's what allows me to you know, talk about. So what I would do is I think uh, not focus as much on the target because that's very well covered, not focus as much on the tariffs. Uh, and the key challenges which we started with, the, you're all aware that the grid parity is more on the other side now. We are uh, challenging almost the, uh, the thermal power, the thermal energy now to you know, compete with uh, the solar in that sense. So I think the key agenda is what I will focus on which is what we need equity, and that's actually coming out of the returns on equity. As I think uh, you all definitely would agree with me that unless the returns on equity is adequate, you neither get your own return, which is actually going to be redeployed. And unless that internal accruals come in, more and more projects that you really want to promote will not be as clearly available. So one of the key solutions which I will discuss with you lies in some of these innovative instruments, which was, which is what uh, I want to bring out. And I will probably cover uh, four of them today, the green bonds, the masala bonds, the invits, and uh, uh, the uh, one more mechanism, the credit enhancement and other things, which I think uh, you will see more and more. We are already seeing it happening in the marketplace, but that's where. But then if you can position your company, a, a small, you know, mention of that was made by Amit also that, you know, uh, proper structuring of your projects today and its equity today, if you can do it right now and upfront, then it, it helps you in actually structuring a great, great exit. The market is very, very favorable even right now in India, in my opinion, towards uh, specifically these SME and related IPOs. And if you can position your company in the green sector there, and specifically the, the solar and wind and the related small hydro, I think you do get a, you do get a, a great uh, attractiveness and possibly a great valuation. So that's what, internationally, of course, uh, there has been a great euphoria, but uh, we are seeing largely this getting into, consolidated into a, a direct, I would say, being a direct presence directly into Indian market because now the market is not only well tried, is well developed and you are seeing the PPAs having evolved over a period of time. Though of course I am not denying that there is a threat always looming large on a possible renegotiation of any of these PPAs. But then that's what uh, a typical democratic market like India actually has to, you know, I would say grapple with. Uh, during the time when I was financial advisor to the solar mission of Gujarat, I remember one fine morning I realized that some of uh, uh, some applications have been filed uh, regarding the tariffs being questioned. And I had the benefit of uh, working very closely with the, the, the then energy secretary. And I asked him, you know, I, I called him up in the morning and I said, sir, how can the, the, the uh, PPAs be questioned in Gujarat right under our nose? And it could not have happened without your permission. He's, he has, you know, a very beautiful answer. I'm sure most of you know Mr. DJ Pandian, who's uh, been at the helm of affairs there. He had a very, he has a very typical way of handling each concern, you know. So what time can you be in Gujarat? <laughs> you know, I said, I can be there by the afternoon, sir. What we discussed at length was that, you know, the officers had gone ahead and file that. So, you know, this is a typical structure, democratic structure, which I'm sure all of you know that more than I do. 
anyone can raise his hand and say, boss, uh, I have done it. He would not even ask the permission to do it. I have done it. And, I, and when we spoke to them, they said, sir, it does not need the chairman's permission to go ahead and question anything. We, we felt it right in the interest of the nation, country, state, and our organization, and we are right there. So you do have to grapple with that problem. So what, why I'm bringing that out also is that, you know, bringing in partners, bringing in innovative financing, talking about, learning about the in innovative instruments like INVITS, and covering your risk is a very important thing. Here I would like to mention here that, you know, the tariffs that we've heard about, I was uh, briefly alluding to that when I was talking about the kind of tariffs that you are seeing that have been structured also on the back of very, very high quality structurings which have happened in this country and complete de-risking. So I would say four reasons which actually held that. One was the transparency in the bid. And that's actually, see, the, the regime of feed-in tariff is not going to come back now. Let's, let's not, uh, let's not uh, get eluded by this. So this is going to be completely uh, a bid process now. And that's what we'll have to live with in, in every sector almost. So the transparency is increasing so much that you know each one is competing with the other. So what quality and what cost of money do you bring on table is going to be your key parameter. Each time you will have to work to be more qualitative the next day and the next day and the next day because then you attract the lowest costing capital and then you attract the largest pool of money at the highest possible valuation which is your key success factor in this business. I think I've already said that 80% of both capex and opex if, if you all allow me to say that much is actually the capital which is other than your capital. So the, the best quality that you attract is all that you're going to. So transparency in bid, the lowered of, lowering of the risk, the credit enhancement by the off-taker, and the CECLP phenomena. So I think uh, very clearly the credit enhancement by the off-taker was led by World Bank and uh, others. We saw that in the Reva bid. More and more it's increasing now. And the lowered risk, I remember Anand running that uh, session at that point of time and taking the opinion of so many people across the country that how could this bid be down to such a great level and crashed almost in the pricing terms and then we all shared our notes in that. But then the, the cost effective capital which I have been constantly talking about and specifically for the larger projects. So I would, I would even urge if you can take up larger projects specifically there or if you can come down to, the, to become a developer in the off taker and follow that RESCO model, which, which does give you a great amount of, uh, you know, uh, uh, reduction in the cost of your uh, debt financing. So I think that's, those are the two key models, and I think I've seen that happening more and more. I'm sharing out of the practical notes there. Well, one thing I do want to talk about very strongly, which is the emergence of the, uh, the, the masala bonds. Green bonds, of course, because it gives you that pool of capital which is focused on clean energy. What does it do typically? So this money is also backed in a lot of sense by social commitments, which is what, which is why I think it was very important that we have heard Ruby talk about, you know, that we have to be environmental and socially conscious on that. Because then it, and specifically this sector which we are talking about, the CSR funds are typically one which does not really look for a return on capital, but if they get a return on capital, even if it's small, that money will move towards you. So I think you need to position yourself to kind of get yourself endorsed more and more by these qualitative players and more and more attract this private equity, which Amit is going to talk more about and my friend uh, is going to talk more about. So I think that masala bonds, we've seen a lot of them. I mean, I'm sure you are tracking the market uh, even more than I am, but uh, of a magnitude of around 14,000 crores, 15,000 crores approximately, already raised in the last few years post the, uh, the uh, transaction, the lead transaction which, uh, which was led by uh, IFC in that sense, the first rupee bond, they called it the masala bond. The big advantage is that you raise money directly on rupee 
the repayment is in rupee and the furthermore the best part is that your the designated interest coupon rate remains in rupee so and that allows you a lot of leverage it's almost five times of your uh, your uh, cash flows in that sense this is the surplus cash flows so that's a huge amount of money if you see in your cash flows if you dip into your cash flows you'll realize that if you can position yourself on that you get a very large pool of money which acts as your quasi equity even before that entire equity has come into your your fold so i think while you keep waiting for the quality equity but these are some of the tools i thought you must know how to raise innovative money uh, irida also has very recently raised money the rates of interest is getting exorbitantly lower i i mean not exorbitant i would rather say that it's getting so deep down right now 7.13 is what irida is raised around 2000 crores on and nhi is again going for another round of 25000 crores i am told by them so it's a very great market that's developing for all of you and you should remain very well entrenched and when well focused on that uh credit enhancement the country has not seen as much but uh, as i interact with uh, junaid and others from world bank i realize that you know more and more it's becoming more important for these multilateral developmental institutions to not give directly money to some of these large corporates that we work with we are realizing that what they are doing is that they will actually give that pool of money almost to credit enhance their portfolio make it very professional and offer this to the lenders at large such that they get very qualitative money and much larger in size and volume obviously your projects which are you know typically in the project stage cannot get rating more than triple b as of now but then with this credit enhancement as a product it brings them to a level of double a etc where you can get some of these qualitative investors and one of the key strategy which we have deployed in in this sector as we have worked with some of the developers is that we've got the timely money availability made to these developers and then thereafter we've actually done what is typically known as the take out so what it held on was that once you have that cash flow available and if the qualitative uh, availability of a credit off taker is there uh, of the of the uh, power off taker is there and your ppa is long term in nature you do get much larger pools of money allowing again something what i was talking about that quasi equity kind of money is what is very important for you well one more product which i actually wanted to talk about of course there are a lot of innovations that we can talk about but then uh, suffice uh, for this uh, presentation i would say is that you know the, the most important thing i'm seeing developing is the invit market the infrastructure investment trust uh, which is typically a perennial bus business trust that you form on 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 which you actually leverage your current development raise pool of money by transferring that into that as your contribution and invite financial investors from within the country most qualitative ones from within the country i would say and i have seen them participating and the ones that you would why for so you could think about even an aggregation model here you know which is what you typically could uh, get into form a transparent professional business trust bring in yourselves your co-developers into that and offer it to pension funds mutual funds and others to bring pools of money allowing you to further develop more and more stream of project and i think that's some of the best options i have and i think that's what i had to talk about well of course some of you know next gen but not really to, to spend too much of time i've already described we service clients across uh, this spectrum uh, very deeply focused on renewable energy we've been advising various uh, state governments specifically gujarat on their solar mission and have uh, done uh, some transactions in this sector already and uh, we do a lot of valuation for companies across the country including first solar nestle LinkedIn, which is now Microsoft, actually Exxon, Schneider, so on and so forth. Well, I think uh, great to be interacting with you, and I'm sure you are collecting some of the questions which I have uh, to ask you people to share with our learned panelists. Don't leave them; 
without asking your best questions. This is a very, very <laughs> enviable panel and uh, I'm very happy that I'm sitting with them. So please keep your questions lined up and I look forward to interacting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, back on my other role now and uh, gives me pleasure to say that we should start with uh, Amit first because Amit, if you can now in a little more detail bring out that, you know, how the developers, uh, what would they need to do to attract that quality equity investment, according to you? What should be your, what would be your best guidance to them that how should they go about in raising more equity for the projects that they're thinking about? First of all, Sanjeev, thank you for a detailed presentation that you have given about the new kind of options that are available in the market for raising capital. Uh, so with regards to how could developers, to your question, that how could developers do what they can do, you know, so that they can attract the best capital. I think one point which is kind of clear today in the market is that they have to kind of demonstrate how would they achieve the scale so that they can deploy that capital. What happens with most of the uh, kind of developers is, okay, you can say I want to raise capital, but then the other side of the story is how would you deploy that capital? So if you can demonstrate, you can deploy that capital with the returns that which you are raising that capital for. Uh, now that that is one key element when you are going out to a story to, you know, how would I kind of deploy that capital, whichever you get it, then that's the most important because most of these funds or uh, kind of private equity players, they have capital which is raised from other LPs and the moment you raise that capital from them, the clock starts ticking to start generating returns. Now, if you say that I'll win an auction in the next 12 months, which will be like a, a auction where I will be actually be able to achieve that 13-14% which I'm committing to my investor, now then that 12 months the returns are not generating and that, that becomes a big challenge when you look at a private equity backed player who wants to generate capital. So, if you can kind of demonstrate that how would you deploy this capital as soon as possible, managing the returns that are committed to the investors, and that is one way that most of these developers can convince the people that how would, um, to you know, get their capital from that type of players. And second thing is, you know, demonstrate ability. That, okay, as I say, as people have been saying that a new person or new entity, or even an entity which has done 100, 200 megawatts, now it's becoming very challenging from them to demonstrate the ability that they'll be able to execute this well, as well as to manage the risks that are very well. Now, there are various uh, risks at various different stages of uh, kind of the project, right? Apart from, you know, sectoral risks which are there in the market, but even when you are, once you have won an auction from that point to having, reaching at an operating stage, there are a good amount of risks. Once as risk, what you know, what we have learned from various developers speaking to them is the project management risk. That you know that okay, you uh, the, uh, people say execution of solar is nut and bolt play, but it's not that easy, right? Okay, you have to ensure that your capital drawdown is actually to the best possible, most efficient method. Your debt is not drawn down on day one, so that you start paying more interest during construction phase. You try to do that, defer it to a later period. Try to draw equity earlier. That is one on the financing side. One is on the execution side. When will your panels be ordered? When will your modules be received at site? How would you kind of construct that type of um, project management? That you know your payout to those suppliers that as late as possible. Your kind of tie-ups with your EPC partners or your subcontractors where you are delaying the. I would not say delay the payment, but kind of try to defer the payment as late as possible as per the contracts where deferring has two benefits, A, cash flow benefit, and second is even how their work is done. You would have checked their work, there are enough amount of PR tests, fat tests that are done, which will convince that, okay, the vendor has done a good job and can be paid off. So such type of project management, if done well, then these type of projects become viable versus if this project management history is not there, which you haven't demonstrated, then that type of, you know, risk management ability, execution ability, if you demonstrate well to investors, they are actually attracted by people. And that's where when we speak to a lot of pension funds or sovereign wealth funds, they try to see the market, but at the end they narrow down to the top three, four people and say, we want to try to invest in these three, four, because of the ability to manage these type of risks. And even, you know, once your project is into operation, then there is another type of risk, which is, you know, you try to manage the ONM very well, your cycles are well kind of, uh, covered that you know your labor is managed well it's not that you're cleaning all panels on one day it is staggered over the month so such type of demonstrations you do your ability to have relationships with the discoms and you know ensuring that the payments are coming on time a three two to three month receivable 
difference between a one good group and a different group actually will change your project returns. So such type of you know operational kind of uh, abilities that if you can demonstrate to an investor now that that will actually you know showcase that okay you are a better group than the other person when you are going out to raise in the market. So these are like small small things which now investors earlier investors used to think okay this is a great sector we want to invest into it and then okay you can create a story and then even the opportunities were infinite with that returns now you have opportunities but when you say opportunity which will be able to get the returns which will be able to you know make that player a mark and then at the end after five years the projects or whatever is the projects which are developed are quality enough that you know that the investor will have an exit also because what we see from most of this PE guys it's not an entry which is in the mind even an exit is in the mind so even through from right from investment to the exit phase how would you be able to you know ensure that they do not their kind of capital is well kind of locked in and then they have a good demonstrative returns over the period so such type of things that we see that n now investors are asking for from earlier where they said okay this is a sector we want to invest now okay this is a sector but then there are a lot of kind of cautious optimism that has gone into it and that's where all these things if a group can demonstrate that's where i would say then they are a group who will be there to raise capital from the market Fantastic, Amit. Thank you. I think that was great insight that, you know, market has really matured up and uh, in, instead of a uh, wild rush, the investors are more and more matured now. So I think some of the developers here know this and uh, they would really focus their 